It's here. It's finally here. At least I think it's this. I don't know. Not sure why he's working in the dark. Ryan! Yo. I think it's here. So welcome to Game Changers, and finally, I think this is the missing puzzle to the jigsaw of which is the MX-5. What were you waiting for? Well, what are those gloves? Wait, wait, I have something for you. Beauty. <laughs> beauty, there. Be beauty, they are. Yeah, if anybody wants to sponsor me a load of gloves, it'd be great. <laughs> I was gonna say grinding this and gloves because this is my fourth pair of gloves since I got here. <laughs> you got the knife. That's not a knife. That's, That's a spoon. <laughs> I see you played knifey spoonie before. <laughs> <laughs> That's a spoon. I see you played knifey spoonie before. So, a bit of backstory to this, and it's gonna be really awkward if it's not it, but it says the company on it, so I'm fairly sure it is. We went to probably 10 different companies, and nobody would do this, and we got to the guys at G19, and they were more than accommodating for us. They gave us a time frame better than what you could do, getting sent from America, and a price that was even better. So, um, hopefully, it's exactly what we're after. It's a sum. Oh, it's, it's, def it's definitely a sum. Oh, it's put a nice baffle in it too. That's nice. That is it. That is nice. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm not even gonna pretend I even know slightly what I'm talking about. I know that the pot thing's been moved to the back and that is about it. That's very nice welding. So and relocated so the old standard sump is here. Yeah. And it's hitting your steering rack and your anti-roll bar. So the idea is now that we can get the steering rack and the anti-roll bar here. Yeah. And this will sit down in below the subframe. So it should, it should fit. So they've done little like, little turns down. Ah, uh, you wouldn't understand. <laughs> Doesn't matter, yeah. I, I like it, it's very nice. Well done, G19. So um, I guess the next job is to get this onto the engine stand drain all the oil out of it and then we can get the sump fitted and then kind of put it into the engine bay and we get more of an idea of how it's actually going to sit. Right, so let's get this fitted to the engine. excitement of the sump arriving there is actually another package and Dave is here and he knows more about this said package because this is great because this is the magic of the internet Josh the magic the magic of the internet someone in Canada, in Canada Toronto Ontario in grassroots performance was watching our videos me and you idiots in Canada across the world in another country where they could watch anything they wanted to it was probably better than us Waste in their time. <laughs> um, so they were watching on and they reached out and said, we would love for you guys to try out one of our very fancy oil coolers. And It'd in be, this box. I think this is the oil cooler. Be embarrassing if it wasn't and it was just like a pack of flyers, but I do think it is the oil cooler. Well, we and don't you know have what? many things coming from Canada, to be and honest. The worst thing is, he asked me, which car would I like to put it on? And do you know what, Josh? I was actually generous for once and said, I think Josh's car could do with this. I also have the other side of this, so Dave, didn't need one on his car, and since he got this for the SR20, who needs one? I need my cooler. <laughs> so you may get back onto these guys to get yourself one. Okay, okay so what we got here is beautiful. Oh wow, oh, this right. is like a fancy one then. A very fancy one. And I, <laughs> this is so, your face now. I'm very happy that it's going on your car and not my car. <laughs> It's got all the lines as look, well. Perfect lines there. Check this bad boy out. Oh, look at that bracket. Oh, look at that. Oh, there you go. Grass Ryan. Performance logo. There's a nice bit of yeah. um, bit of fab. CNC in. Oh, of... Look at that. Oh, you know what the best thing is there? It's even black. It goes with the black intercooler black and the black radi black radiator. Black radiator. That's very, very tasty. Okay. You've got all of your little bits and pieces to fit it. Look, all of your rubber bushings and stuff. Even has grassroots performance printed on it. There you go. And you have got. 
bolts and washers. Actually, this is absolutely amazing here. And more lines. Jeez, you've got everything with this. <laughs> what, what more could you have in this box? Oh, look at this. A catch can. You've got a catch can? It's even got a catch can. Look at this. That's not a catch can, that's an oil filter. That is an oil filter. <laughs> We're on the ball here. There you go, Dave. I think that should be a t-shirt for you. It's a present. It's medium, isn't it? It's... <laughs> there you go, Josh. <laughs> Thank you. Class. It's, it's gonna be sticky, Dave, or a mug or something. If the mug gets broken anyway. <laughs> it's not a mug. This is a serious bit of kit. This is obviously made to bolt straight onto an SR then. Yeah. That's an SR. Look at all that. No modifications required. Brackets and everything, all the bolts, everything. Brilliant. That's the amazing thing about the drift community. We've had people watch in from all over the world and just send us a message saying, hey, do you want to try out some of our products? And we don't accept all those invitations, but when you've got quality like this, I mean, it's a no-brainer. Like, this stuff is amazing. And again, it's going to look so good on your car. <laughs> <laughs> so, Josh would like to thank Grassroots Performance. I would like to be a little bit sad now because Josh got nicer things than me. And have you seen what Ryan has done? to the car. He split it in half. This is for cooling, I assume. This is for cooling so that when you're driving along, the air comes up. Like if the gearbox sort of has an issue or whatever, you can just reach your hand down and just, you know. <laughs> you can fix it while, yeah, you while you're driving along, you've got a ratchet and you can just fix it as you go. So it's much more convenient. I mean, I can see right to the back of the car, through the car. You know, I feel better today because we chopped a lot out of my car. Um, and I was going, oh, it's mad how you buy like a shell or a perfect car, and then you got to chop it up. You've gone to another level here now. You've lost half. Like, of the floor, there's really not much of the original floor left because the back bits had to be cut out. That's got to cut out. So, it's going to be like, that part there is going to be the original part. That's all. Why am engine. I holding this like a baby? I, I don't know. You, you really attached. It's just empty. Wasn't it? That's, that's actually the empty part. I'm just going to put it, I just brought it around with me for a walk there. <laughs> it's on. It fits. <laughs> So this is the moment of truth, what are your predictions? Absolute misery. It's not gonna be misery, it's gonna... This is what it should have done in the first place, slot right in. The engine mounts won't even need to be modified, this. just go right over them. Yeah. Welcome to Team Naive with Josh Holdsworth. <laughs> I'm, I'm honestly nervous, this is the one part of the build that is the most nerve-wracking bit. This is the difference of weeks and time on the project, I think. This, this is this, technically this, make or break. This is a make or break moment now. No pressure, Ryan. No pressure, no on, pressure on me. <laughs> yes, our 20s under serious pressure at the moment. Right, hold on, hold on. Ah, uh, uh, you're close to, you're resting on the roll bar. Well, this is the furthest it's ever got before. It's not bad now so far. Wayne's now coming for moral support or to Rob. steal some things. Oh, he's just coming to steal some things. Rob, this pipe here. Feel this needs to come off. Yeah. That's the thing that you wanted to relocate. Yeah, but even that, it's going to be in the wrong place. You might get it behind the anti roll bar if you did that. Well, it's still got room to go back there if you can clear that. It's yeah, got it's that much to go back. Your turbo here is going to be. Uh, I think the turbo might be okay. That was more of the downpipe. Yeah, the downpipe's in trouble. So now the sump is the least of our worries. Yeah, you've got this yeah. stage two of absolute misery. This side scraping too. Scraping the manifold. If you can go down. This bit down. That's we'll down. I have a feeling there's more cutting to be done. It's low enough. Like that's it doesn't need to go any like, like, There's where it's gonna be sitting there like that. You had it level like that. Oh is it? It's just it's very close to everything. The steer column, the steering power steering lines, the back of the bulk. We can trim the bulkhead, I'm not too worried about that. Is this progression, do you think? I think you had so much concern about the sump, the turbo, and the manifold, and now the worry is actually the steering. That like you solve one problem, then it pushes it on to No, the I think it's not pushing on. I just think, unless we got, until we got the engine in, we wouldn't know, but it's your rack that's the issue now. Well, the good thing is it's in the car. Well, <laughs> I think I pretty much could put it in the car, Josh. It's getting it fitting in the car, working <laughs> in the car is the hard part. <laughs> is that we can get the engine in the car, we just need a clutch pedal independent of the system that's in it. The clutch cylinder inside the car, so we get a car. clutch pedal for it. Because I mean, I just showed that. It looks to me like all the rest of 
fits, right? Like everything's kind of. I think everything else fits. Like this is. So the inlet manifold is touching. Yeah. And you can't get it straight. And unless you go and buy an expensive inlet manifold, and it still might not work. We're better off just relocating the pedal. So if you relocate, if you get the, say, the same pedal that's in Dave's, yeah, the cylinder you would the have the cylinder on the inside, so obviously you would have no problem. Yeah. It's tight to everything. It's, it's very, the, the alternator is very tight, the steering rack. Some fits perfect, yeah. Some is almost, there's too much clearance on the sump almost. Mm. Do you have another problem with now? What? How's the wastegate going to fit? Where's the wastegate? That, that is a big problem actually, yeah. I what? Where's the wastegate? Oh, it's on here. It's not going to run that. You it's see right the way that, be that bends right down? Right we just cut that off and turn it. And it'll come up here. And yeah. we'll send it out through there. The screen pipe go through the wing. That's, yeah. That's what you want, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I couldn't get the uh, exhaust out the bonnet, but a screen pipe out the wing, that could be a new that, one. That could, be, that could do, that could do. That would, that, that would do. But we're definitely going to have to cut a tunnel for the exhaust. Well, is it? <laughs> so the exhaust comes off there, the downpipe and there is. Out. Can you not like just feed it through there? Here. <laughs> yeah, small one. But your key's cut there because the end of the bulkhead is technically there, so you can. Yeah. So all we're gonna do is just cut like a tunnel here, and we'll make a tunnel down for the exhaust to go down along with the tunnel. Yeah. engine in an MX-5. It seemed bad, it got worse, then it got better, now it seems positive enough. We have a plan, which is the most important thing. So there's a lot of modifications that need to be done. We need to change the clutch pedal, we need to work out where the alternator needs a little bit of clearance, we need to do the tunnel, gearbox, all that stuff. But Ryan will be doing that in the next couple of episodes, but nobody cares because we're going to go drifting. We're going to go uh, grab the Mustang, which you guys saw in the last couple of episodes, has got all of its suspension redone. We're now going to take it over to Mondello Park and see if the car is transformed. So I'm going to do a little bit of skidding. Hopefully the Mustang is awesome. And hopefully when we come back, Ryan will have the engine mounts done for the MX-5, which means that we'll be kind of moving in the right direction. He very much put you on the, on the spot there. Yep, he did that. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully when we come back, Ryan will have the whole car finished and we'll be ready to go drifting with yours, Josh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> What's up guys, I'm jumping in and give a big shout out to one of our partners here at Drift Games, one of the teams behind the teams, which is Link ECU. Now this is the new G4X from Link ECU. This is what will be going into both of our new drift cars. This is the greatest thing that you can put into your performance car or drift car. Look, Josh built an engine, a 1.6 stock block MX-5 running 310 horsepower. Now on the first day, it was about to blow up like everyone would. But this little baby basically said something wrong here and shut the car down. Well, at least we have an ECU that can figure that out. So smoke your tires, not your engine. Get onto the Link ECU website, check out their G4X range if it's available for your road car or your drift car. And join us on track and stay on track with Link ECU. Okay, so we're in Mondello. We've got a little bit of sunlight left and we've got about half an hour before the noise curfew kicks in. So we're gonna jump in the Mustang, throw the cameras on, see how this thing runs. All right guys, we're here on the International Loop in Mondello Park. We've got the new angle kit from FDF Race Shop in. We've got the BC Racing coilovers in. We're testing the new front tires, the Federals from the tire box. We've cleared all of our fault codes on the ECU that we had the last day, which was from uh, the battery actually being so low. So we put a new battery in. I'm gonna go warm the car up now for a bit and see if she's any different. So let's get some heat in those tires. Will you get off TikTok? We're doing a TikTok. <laughs> Follow uh, Curran Motors on TikTok, he's newly to it. So, oh, there he is. Oh, oh, oh tunes going and everything. <laughs> what is that song you're putting on? <laughs> <laughs> so, I've only got about half an hour of daylight left here, so hopefully, we'll be able to see if the car's actually been improved or not. Fingers crossed, improved because a lot's gone into it. 
This is one of the competition layouts we told you guys before from the Irish Drift Series. So we're going to throw it in and see if there's any difference in the steering and the handling and the suspension. So hopefully it's made a bit dramatic difference. I'm excited. Let's see what happens. That's definitely an improvement there. You're in the good books then. Get off TikTok. We're doing all the TikToks. Everyone wants a TikTok. You did one! What? You actually did one! It's like it's a different car. You you didn't make one of those no way near the, with the angle you did the other day. No, I was pushing angle there to see what it do it and it just stuck. Like yeah. it's like a different car. Like a totally different car. Like it's so much more controllable. You can actually you're not you can make the car do what you want it to do rather than just reacting to whatever it's going to do, Why if that makes sense. Why did you do this years ago? Because I, I didn't know of FDF race shock <laughs> or BC racing coilovers. I thought it was just the same stuff. All right, well, you've still got quite a bit of tread. Wayne's got you on the TikTok, so you're coming for social there. Oh, Wayne's doing TikTok. Yeah, oh, we're yeah, TikTok. He's, he's got the tunes going on there. We'll, we'll try and pull some gangster stuff off, right? All right, go on. I won't mind the car's not fully set up. We just set up late last night. He's trying, to, he's trying to cover himself now. Dave said it's good, so um. So what's it, it going to be like when I do set up? <laughs> Whoa, the big claims coming in from Wayne there. All right, we go for something a bit more mad. They're probably going to spin here, but I just want to test the limits of the car. That's also important to do. So yeah, let's try a few, uh, few flicks and tricks. Okay, so he's got the um, confidence now. This is usually where we see bad things happen. Still on TikTok, honestly. Oh, we're on Instagram now. compared to the other night day. and day I'm like not even like normally you're clutching in and clutching out and doing lots of different stuff during the run to go oh, oh, oh. now I'm like firing it left firing it right you actually fire this car now you can fire it like it's still wet. like it's not a miracle worker the suspension change it's still heavy it's still long it's still a bit boaty but it's so much better than it was well let's do a run where we try and do backwards like if we did backwards entry in the Mustang like that's an impossibility you before this far off there no, I, that was genuinely close. I'm gonna go for it. I mean, it's it's bright, it's lovely. It's not as bouncy. It, it's like it just feels more planted, more flat. Like when you come on and off the handbrake or off the throttle, like I double initiated into the first corner. I would, you would never, have never done that. Before. Never done that in this car before. You'd be in a tree. The fronts, once you get a little bit of heat in them, they're really good. They're like the new Federals. Are once you get a bit of heat, when they're cold. They're not so good, but when they're, I'd say they're, when you get a little bit of temperature in them, do a couple of circles, no problems. Yeah, we'll run in with all the cars then this year. Come on, let's see if we can do a backwards entry. That would be like the thing. Now we just want a new car now. <laughs> I was going to say, this. may just put this on the car and it would have been absolutely fine. Yeah. Maybe I got a new car. Sideways. Like still, that's, still, you never would have done that yesterday. No, I'm, and I'm going, go again. Where normally we do these videos, I'm like, just 
to get me out of this car. Let me do three laps to go home. I'm gonna drive all day now. I think I can do work. I think I can go. Let's do one until I spin. All right. Let's do one until I spin. He's got a wrecked car now. That backwards? Well, yeah, you were backwards for a second. I can do it, I can do it. Just one more try. One, one more try. See, those tires are almost toasted now. Or at least they definitely are now. <laughs> that, this is some car now. I mean, you've got a problem. <laughs> I can't problem see a thing. Now. I can't see anything. We need to figure that out. I think that's we, need to, we need to get rid of the holes in the back. But well, at least the steering's sorted now. But like, look at the difference from the other day. So yeah, amazing. Thank you so much to the guys from FDF Race Shop, BC Racing Coilovers, and the Tire Box. This thing is transformed. Also, thank you to Wayne, Ryan, Josh, everybody else who helped. I'm, I'm falling back in love with the car again. I, I kind of lost the love for it. I know you guys might be the same with some cars, but I, I didn't actually feel confident in it. Now, I, I would take this to competition in the morning, no problem. We put semi-slicks on this thing, dial in the coilovers and the suspension just a little bit more, maybe put the lock stops back in, this thing is good to go, so that's amazing. So we're gonna get a couple of nice snaps. It's golden hour right now. It's the first nice day in Mondello since uh, 1973. So we're gonna get a couple of photos and then we're gonna go back to the shed and kind of summarize the next few things on the channel and what we learned about this. Here at Drift Games, we absolutely love online drifting. But more importantly, for you guys watching at home, we want to get you in the game as well. So we've partnered up with DigitalMotorsports.com, Ireland's first online sim store, who are experts in everything when it comes to online drifting. And they're going to give you guys a full free sim rig at the end of this series. Now I know you want to know, how do you win? Well, it's quite simple. Every single episode of Games Changers, we're going to release a letter. It looks a bit like this. And that letter will form a sentence. And at the end of the series, the first person who can put that full sentence together correctly wins a full simulator. And that's not bad going. All right, we're back at Drift Games HQ. The Mustang is tucked away and I'm so happy. Genuinely, guys, I mean, I bought this car as a dream car. It lived up to it in looks and power, everything else, but in handling, it did not. Today, I'm going home a smiling man because I think the stuff that we put in there from BC Racing and FDF Race Shop have transformed the car. I actually want to go drive it. I was even talking to Wayne about going driving it more. That wasn't something I was doing last year. So that's didn't an, want to drive it. I didn't before. want to drive it. And now I just, I love the thing. And now it's not only going to get its overhaul on the outside and it's obviously got the new strong wheels on it, but what's going to complement them is a brand new livery by the guys in Precision Tint and Graphics and it was designed by Factory 83, as you guys can see over there. And uh, Ian has designed something very cool. It's different than the Corvette and the MX-5 because the car is a big block of cheese. So it's not, a, it's got no curves. So basically you had to do something completely new with it. So it was a bit of a challenge, but I can't wait to see what the guys do with it in Precision Tinted Graphics. It's gonna be amazing. And on top of that, a lot of people are gonna ask, what are we doing with the Mustang? Well, let's be honest guys, we wanna to get to the championships this year. We've got, I've got an American car. So all the parts that are gonna be for the Corvette, if they happen to break, are gonna be long and tedious to get into the country. If we have an issue a couple of nights before an event, and we can't get the parts, and there's no way possibly we can get the parts in time, uh, we have a backup, which is this, when we bring this and to the And a good backup. And a very, a backup with 
600, uh, not six, 300 horsepower, it was bad math, 300 <laughs> horsepower more than the car I'm building. So we're going to call the cars by what they are. This is definitely going to be the hammer and the Corvette is going to be the knife. So the knife will be the agile kind of lightweight car and this will just be the hammer that we bring to events if we need to kind of just bring something. So I, as a backup car, before I would have dreaded the idea, now I'm actually thinking it might just be very competitive. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, Josh, we also have some uh, developments on the old Enjeruni. So we left this positive route, wasn't it? We were all happy. It was very happy, but um, it's kind of, there's a bit of negativity happened and the alternator pretty much was resting onto the steering rack. So Mazworks, they actually make a kit that relocates it to the other side. And as you can see, there's nothing on the other side. So that's around 250 euros ish coming from America. So that's not too, we were expecting to change the manifold and the turbo. I was, I didn't sleep because I knew when this engine went in, you'd be like, well, we need an inlet manifold, an exhaust manifold, uh, we need a turbo and all this. And now at least everything from that engine, that's such a good engine too. That's a really well built engine with really good parts on it, really good turbo and a really good manifold. So the fact that we know the power delivery of that engine is not going to be affected now. It's going to run close to 500 horsepower. You just have to change the alternator. You live with that. And the other plus of changing the alternator means because it was on the other side getting blocked, it can actually sit further down now, which is better for weight displacement. So that's another positive of it. That's a big word for you, Josh. <laughs> Did I say it right? I said it right. <laughs> Dis <laughs> displacement. Displacement. Good thing we didn't have to go to TH Components anymore. Yeah, Components was a, uh, yeah, that was a. New TH Components. TH Components and the TH Components now. And I think. It's a very successful episode. This was a good episode because I'm smiling at the end of it because I know I've got a really good backup car and a demo car. You're smiling because you have an SR20 sitting in the car and for the first time. And we know time. for the first time everything to make it actually fit. And the most important thing that everyone wants to know is it will fit, we will work. I mean, it's about 750 miles from that now, and Ryan's face. Ryan's, Ryan's, Ryan's face is. <laughs> huh? I was just saying that uh, we know we can get it to work. Now, we don't have to do all the work to make it work. You do, so you're not as happy as we are, but we're going home very happy because <laughs> we know that Ryan can make it work. And that, another way, the enthusiasm yeah. on that face. Look at that, he's like, this is going to be class. He's just happy to still in He's sitting there like, I wonder what parts these lads can't use so I can thieve them. <laughs> you got, Wayne got a sump, so basically, I got an amazing backup car. Josh got an SR20 and the MX-5. Wayne got a free sump. Ryan. Ryan got a plow of work for the next two weeks. <laughs> we'll see you in the next episode where Ryan has a mental breakdown. Talk to you later. <laughs>